Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got an interesting show for you. Yep, yep, our running back room is getting no respect. Boy, that's the story of my life. No respect. I don't get no respect. And that's going to change. You can count on it. It should have already changed, but it's just going to take a little time, I think. I'm not really sure why this uh, group isn't listed higher as far as uh, top 10 running back rooms. I think it's a fantastic room, and I've got uh, stats to back that up. I think it's similar to what happened to Jalen Hyatt and Cedric Tillman and even Hendon Hooker. Oh, well, it's the system. It's the system. Of course, we've heard that Hyatt's killing it in the NFL, and everybody's talking about him. So it may not just be the system. Maybe we've got some great athletes. But this running back room, I couldn't be more pleased with it. I think it's a three-headed monster. And on top of that, we got a couple of other guys that are going to show out this year in a couple of different ways. But we're going to get into this running back room because this is a disrespected room as far as what the national media thinks of it. And I'm going to show you how far off base they are on this. And here you go, college football's top 10 running back units in the country. They're talking about Michigan's number one, Ohio State number two, Penn State number three, Georgia Bulldogs number four, Alabama is number five, Ole Miss Rebels, number six. Arkansas Razorbacks, number seven. Oregon Ducks. The Oregon Ducks are number eight. Florida State Seminoles, number nine. And Tennessee's got to at least be 10th, right? Wisconsin Badgers, number 10. And let's see what uh, CBS has to think about the top running back rooms. They listed the top five. Michigan, number one. Ohio State, Penn State, Georgia. They went with the exact same. More, they put Oregon, number five. Honorable mention. Maybe we're an honorable mention. Arkansas, Clemson. Florida, Florida State, Ole Miss, Wisconsin. We're not even in the honorable mention. We're not even in a player to be named later <laughs> in a trade. So uh, I know what this uh, stems from. It's the same reason our wide receivers don't get respect, the same reason our quarterbacks don't get respect. It's Josh Heupel's magic. He's a magic man, and he's just turning these guys into something they're not. Okay, well, let's at least look at the stats. I think numbers matter. Numbers don't lie. So I'll put this chart together. And uh, Jabari Small, he had the most attempts, 157, 734 yards with a 4.7 yard average. Now he has the lowest average. Well, why is that? Well, when you're asked to get a third and one or a fourth and one and they hand you the ball and everybody's lined up on the defensive line, your, your goal is to get that one yard plus one more. So you're going to have a lot more attempts where you're just trying to get a couple of yards. Then you've got Jalen Wright. 146 attempts, 875 yards, six yards per carry. And then lastly, uh, Dylan Sampson, who had just arrived, he had 58 attempts, 397 yards with a 6.8 yard average. All three of those averages are outstanding, especially when you're running a lot of short yardage uh, plays to get almost five yards a, a rush. So you put those three guys in the, same, uh, in the same running back room, you're in great shape. All three of these guys are elusive. They're quick. They're fast. They're tough. My understanding is Jabari Small is healthy for the first time in like forever. And Jalen Wright's out there like uh, Cedric Tillman was. And then Jalen Hyatt, he is taken this year seriously. He is going to play well. And then Dylan Sampson's just a home run waiting to happen. That guy is fast. But that's not the only three guys we've got, which is great. Any team in the NCAA would love to have this running back room, I think. But we got two more guys that are coming on board that I think could be real dangerous. And the first guy is Cam Seldon. Now this guy is so fast and so big. He's over 210 pounds. I think he's up to almost 220 now. And he runs a sub 4440. And I've shown you highlights of him up in Virginia. As a matter of fact, I'll show you a few little highlights of him just for the heck of it, because it's fun to watch. And here you'll get to see uh, the speed and how elusive he is. Now look, this guy again is 210 pounds in high school. Look at the sight. Look at the elusiveness. They're not going to take him down. He's too strong, and he just they just can't smell it. That's ridiculous. Here we get to see him again. Nope. You can forget the arm tackles. Then he turns on the jets. Then the elusive move, and there he goes. I mean, this is ridiculous. This looks like a cartoon almost. Nope, you won't tackle me, and you might as well just forget it. I can't wait to see this guy play for real we saw him in the spring game he looked so quick you can see him as a receiver here and then goodbye you have absolutely no chance of tackling me this last guy had the <laughs> that was pathetic 
Let's watch one. I watch one or two more. This is a fun, uh, fun highlights to watch. Oh, that did. He didn't get a didn't get a hand on him. And then goodbye. And just ten yards between him and the guy behind him. And let's watch this last one. Again, playing wide receiver. He's got great hands, wide open. Great defense on that one. And then I'll just run around you like you're not even there. And goodbye. Turn on the Jets. So, yeah, he was the number one recruit in the state of Virginia and picked him up. And that, that was a great pickup. We're going to get to see him this year for sure. I think he's going to be outstanding. But then we got one more guy. And this guy could wind up being very important for us on short yardage. And we I've not talked about him a whole lot, but I've kind of had my eye on, okay, this guy could be special. Now, this dude right here, he just runs straight north and south, powerful. He's 230 pounds, six foot one, and can absolutely, he has a tremendous burst. And this guy's going to be great on third and one, fourth and one. And you'll see the arm tackles, they don't even phase him. You are not going to arm tackle this dude. You've got to have perfect form to bring this dude down. I mean, look at this. You will not tackle me. And this is the guy we're going to see on, like I said, all these short yardage uh, situations. And Jabari Smalls had to do most of that at 210 pounds. This guy will be 20 and 30 pounds heavier. And again, he is a north and south runner. He's got very good speed for his size, but the arm tackling is a waste of time. And then these little cornerbacks, they should be able to at least tackle him, grab his legs. They can't do it because he's too thick. Let's watch him again. Nope, nope, and Surely, get him out of bounds. That, that seems to be the only way they can tackle him. They've got to use the sideline. I've not seen anybody take him down straight up. Here we go again. No, no, no. 230 pounds. Remember, that is some speed for that size. Now, here he is doing a fake punt. If he's back there punting, you ought to know it's going to be a fake. And there he is just tackling. And again, they had to use the sideline. That's the only way. Now you're going to see him on short yardage, and this is where we're going to see him big time for the Vols. And us Vols fans, we should be excited about this player right here. We did not have the 230-pounder last year and just powers it in. So, yeah, I understand this room's not getting the respect it deserves. It should at least be honorable mention, don't you think, given the fact that they're probably going to run for over 2,000 yards this year. I think that's all going to change, and you're going to see that in this first game against Virginia because if they – well, here's the thing. The only way they're going to stop the run, they're going to have to put eight in the box. If they do that, Squirrel White, Dante Thornton, Brew McCoy, Ramel Keaton, Joe's just going to fill it up. Joe's just going to shoot hoops. He's just going to shoot hoops if they do that. But if they leave six and they spread out and try to stop us from passing the ball, we're going to kill them with the running game. We will just destroy them. We'll run for 250 yards, and it'll just be a – it's not going to be pretty. So I'm very excited about our running back room. I think we are loaded and deep and talented. I think it's one of the best running back rooms in the country. It should certainly be top 10 at the very worst. We just don't get any respect. That's just what it boils down to. We're starting to get some because of last year. And I think when we back it up with another really solid year, we'll start getting the respect we deserve. And this running back room will as well. And I do want to talk about today's sponsor, and that is Sevierville Golf Club. Uh, one of my absolute favorite places to play. Uh, they got two golf courses there. I've told you all about these courses, the River and the Highlands. They're beautiful. They're in great shape. I'm actually playing a uh, four-man scramble a little bit later uh, that I'm pretty fired up about. We have a lot of fun out there. We do a nine-hole scramble, men's league. Anyway, uh, the course is always in great shape. They have a tremendous practice facility. I used it yesterday, went out, and I was working on my iron game, uh, mainly in my driver. He's got a beautiful backswing. Dad's, oh, he got all of that one. He's got to be pleased with that. The crowd is just on his feet here. But you can work on your short game, anything that you want to do. And, of course, they have a real nice little 19th hole restaurant there. If you want something to eat, to drink, you can go right in. They'll, they'll treat you great. The uh, staff there is excellent. They're very kind-hearted in the pro shop, the rangers. They're just really nice people, regular guys. And the golf carts have computers on them to tell you exactly how far you are from the hole. I mean, it's really, it's a sweet place to play. And it's never busy, even when it's busy, because they have two golf courses. So even if there's a couple hundred people out there playing golf, it's really, you kind of got the place to yourself a little bit because it spreads out so nicely. And the Rangers stay on top of speed of play and all that. You don't have to worry about that. But just give them a call. It's open to the public. You can book online, book over the phone, whatever you want to do. Uh, check out Sevierville Golf Club for either practicing or playing. I guarantee you'll enjoy it. I highly endorse it. Message. 
And we're not going to be the Rodney Dangerfield of uh, running back rooms much longer. I can promise you that. The world's going to start taking notice of how well we run the ball. Everybody thinks we're a pass-happy offense. Nothing can be further from the truth. We run the ball more than we pass it. Just a fact. And if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's me know to continue to cover the Vols and this big season we got coming up and all our opponents and all those folks that disrespect us. Anyway, if you've not subscribed, it's on your right, my left. Just hit that little button right there. Shia wants you to hit that button. Shia's been through a tough time. Cut the guy some slack. And right over his most recent video that YouTube thinks you'll love. And we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.